It's an abandoned skeleton. The bleach corpse is weathered in places. Something's in its bony hand. I managed to pry it out. The whole corpse looks like it might crumble at any second. Hey. So we can finally cross that off my list. Prying something off something's cold, dead hands. Uh, I wanted to get a better look at that. It's a thick iron door. Keyhole, yada yada yada. For a second there, I thought I lost audio. Climbing out of the manhole, we see that we're on Kami Amachi North Road. We managed to find a way out. Won't hurt to go back to the mansion for now. It'll be a pain to get back to the alley for the car, but... This damn thing when I close my eyes, I just know it. There's the password diamond. Bothered by a thin blonde hair found between the pages. It's a statue that looks like a divine general. It has armor from the Tang Dynasty. It's a statue with its head cut off. It looks like it held a weapon in its left hand. It's a statue that looks like a vidra, vidyaraja or something. It's missing one of its arms as well as its head. It's a Vaisravana statue? It's missing its head. It's a statue with its head cut off. It seems to be holding some kind of Buddhist ritual implement. It's a statue that seems to be a divine general. Its head has been severed. It's a statue with its head cut off. It's lying pitifully on the floor. I search all the statues. Every statue here has a male body. Suddenly, there's the sound of movement from within the box. It's a big iron box. It's coated with a thin layer of dust, but seems to be in decent enough shape. I managed to open the box. Sheets of white paper are inside. They seem to be a multitude of talismans. Was something sealed here? 
Hero peers into the box beside me. So, was something in there? Well... Uh... My voice sounds distant. The cause of the curse. What birthed the spirit? There's nothing like that here. No, there's nothing here. What? What do you mean? Then, what's that in your hand? Hero is right. It's not true that there's nothing inside. There is one thing. I never would have expected something like this. Something that doesn't belong here. A box sealed by talismans has been enshrined. A. Western style cushion. Hero sighs, disappointed. Guess we're out of luck. No way this thing gave birth to a spirit. True. The state of this room and the voices. Something important was definitely sealed up in this place at one point. Yet there's nothing here. Open the pillow. Then the thing we're searching for. Where the hell did it go? A long silence falls between us. It is then that a now familiar pain flares up. Scarlet. It immediately is dyed a deep crimson. Death is only a few minutes away. What's going on? Is death closing in on us all of a sudden? No, it's... The spirit is here. Okay, you definitely take the cake for being the ugliest one in the game. You beat Shimio. A low suture chant hum tumbles in the air. Trembles the air. It feels like my whole body is numb. It may be because of that hum. Pew pew! And then if you remember, you're... You need a female to ring the bell. Consciousness, what? I grab the gun, but I can't control my hand. It turns the gun toward my head and fires. The blink explodes. My consciousness fades. There's a strong ringing in my ears, and it's preventing me from hearing the suture chant. Heroes clutching their head like they can't hear anything either. The numbness has faded. Soldier yells make my heart clutch. Hero is injured. I was injured. Um. Palm pistol? I shoot the palm pistol. Canon soldier is wounded. The spirit fades and becomes intangible. She shakes the bell and is wounded. The spirit turns solid again. Canon soldier yells make my heart clutch. We're both injured. Well, we're running out of weapons here. <laughs> Range short sword blade. Cut on soldier is wounded. The spirit fades and becomes intangible. The spirit turns solid again. <laughs> Slash the rusted army sword. The spirit fades and becomes intangible. The spirit stops. I guess the attack finally worked. Out of nowhere, footsteps approach behind me. The voice yells comically, and whoever it is puts their hand on my back. But I can't take my eyes off the spirit before me. Banshee, is 
that you? What are you doing? Instead of replying, he shoves something into my hand. It's a large chisel with a grip stained in blood. This is... I found it in that room in the mansion. In that instant, I understand everything. The heart of the curse that we were searching for. The object that gave birth to the spirit. So it was kept in Cujo Mansion. Thanks. I'm going to use it. I grab the chisel and face the spirit. I swing the chisel down on the soldier. I jab the chisel at its right ear. It stares at me dispassionately. Finally, it smiles and disappears. The statue stops moving and collapses. It stopped, right? Seems so. I don't got the mark anymore, so there's no doubt about it. Once again, I'm the only one still cursed. Glad I made it in the nick of time. If my legs weren't in such good shape, it would have been over for us. Thanks for saving us, but you know that was pretty reckless. I thought I said it's dangerous for a group of mark bearers to go somewhere haunted. Yeah, you did mention something like that when I was eaten. Completely slipped my mind. Tell us, old man, what happened at the mansion? I'm not quite sure myself, but I'll tell you what I know. After you left, I wandered the place looking for something to eat. My mark hurt like hell right by a room. I slipped inside and found a bunch of chisels and things. He must have been that room I found. I was kind of out of it because of the mark at that point, but I noticed one of the chisels was glowing all weird with the dark light. I knew right away it was hiding off some awesome spiritual power. But what made you decide that you had to bring the chisel here? You seemed sure it'd be effective against the Kanon soldier. I heard a voice when I picked it up. It reminded me of a lady, sorta. It said, to bring the chisel to you. And that's when it hit me. It was what I'd been looking for. Oh, that thing you mentioned in the car. The heart of the curse that created the spirit. Exactly that. So I hoofed it over to give it to you. When I looked through that room before, Yasuoka said that the Kujo family used to create Buddha statues a long time ago. It's possible that chisel was used to create the statue that became the Kanon soldier. I don't know what that voice that he was that he heard. Probably something like the mysterious voice that's guided me before. You know, I haven't heard it in a while. And that's what happened. So we head back to the mansion then, Light? For one, I'm hungry, but I bet Daimon's worried too. I left without saying a word after all. Yeah. Searching for documents on the mark, carting all the statues out. It'll take more than a day to do all that. We should go back to the mansion and figure out what to do next. What? We're leaving already? I wanted to examine this place. I glance at the statue falling to the floor. Sorry, but you'll have to do that another time. Fine. In exchange, not one word about this shelter to anyone else. I'm going to study every inch of it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hey now, this is my home. Can't have you rooting around here. That's just you saying that. You don't legally live here. I'll bring you food, so stop complaining. Much obliged. We return to the concrete passageway. I might be imagining it, but... It feels like the air in here is a little less stagnant than it was before. We climb up out of the manhole in Emno South Alley. Daimon runs up to us, drenched in sweat. He looks even worse than usual. He probably shouldn't have run. <coughs> I found you. Hey, old man. Why'd you suddenly sprint out of the mansion? My mark is gone now, too. What in the world happened? I had something to give light. Isn't that right, hero? I guess. 
I'd rather not think of the consequences if you hadn't made it in time. I'm not sure I follow, but it seems he really helped you out. Well then, if I must do my investigation another day, are we splitting ways here? Our marks are gone now. Light still has his, though. This always happens. I'm used to it. But now I might be able to change that. I finally discovered where the statues stolen from H. Shrine are. I'm lost, but I'm glad for you. It's thanks to all of you. I'll figure the rest out by myself. You should all return to your regular lives. You're saying we should split up, then? Uh, you sure you'll be okay? Something will work out eventually. Besides, this is Sayakujo's dying wish. I want to respect it. Huh. Well, thanks. I'll head back, then. I've been missing all those chemical smells from the lab. Good to hear your research is exciting. But don't forsake your humanity over it and end up like Miss Zoo. Like I do that. It's not even funny, by the way. Oh yeah, Mr. Light. Whenever you want to get those statues, I'll help out. Until then, see you. I'll be off as well. Honestly, all this has put a strain on me. <coughs> I'm barely staying upright. Whatever you do, don't collapse on your way home, please. Hey, Light. One day, I'm hoping to let the public know about the underground shelter. For the sake of the wandering souls without a proper burial. I'd like it if you helped with it. See you around. Guess I'll go too. You're now returning to the shelter, are you? I'm not that brave. Soldier's gone, but there are plenty of other things down there. I'll give it a few days to settle. So you're still planning on going back? I'm not sure I'd call that a smart move. It comes with living this kind of life. I'll bunker down in a park or under a bridge until things calm down. See you, Light. Bring more food next time, yeah? The former mark bearers have all left. I should probably head to the mansion myself. I've got to decide what to do next. I hear a voice calling from behind me. I turn to see Banshee in the middle of the road, staring intently at me. What's wrong? I remember now. His eyes are as wide as saucers. I forgot because of the mark, but I... I've met you before. What? What do you mean? Well, let me think. He scratches his chin. I know his memories are probably all a mess, just haven't gotten them back. But I don't have time to wait for him. Yes, we first met five years ago. And then again, ten days ago. I feel like I've been struck by lightning. I first arrived at Kujo Mansion ten days ago. That means I met him before I lost my memories. I need to know, who in the world am I? I couldn't say. I wasn't interested in asking your name, and you didn't give it. Then tell me what you do know. Tell me about myself, please. Okay. I owe you for the food, so I ask. What should I ask about? You showed up at the shelter. Wanted to know about the Heavenly Buddha Project. Give me food. Actually, you were more focused on the Kujo family than the Kanon soldier. Why did we talk about them? The head of the time was majorly involved in the project. He was famous for his spiritual power, so the army asked him to help. He loaned them a number of his family's prized sacred treasures. You really zeroed in on that bit. Do you know what exactly the army got? Yeah, the shelter had a list. A mirror, a chisel, Buddha statues, cursed objects, and holy talismans. They were all returned to the family. Which means they're all in the mansion now. You kept popping by a few times until one day you just didn't. I only saw you next ten days ago. Next is... I just seen the Kanon soldier and you can bet I booked it out at the manhole. I ran to you on the street, and you treat me to food to celebrate. Thanks for that, by the way. Banshee's talking about the person I was before I lost my memories. It's weird to hear about myself this way. You'd mentioned you'd been overseas. You'd only come back recently, about a month ago. Oh, and that's what I learned at the mark. You told me about it. It slipped my mind until just now. By that time, was my right arm... Yeah, it had the mark. You were acting all odd, though. You'd go to remember something, then stumble over the words. 
the curse was probably in the late stages. In fact, I'd completely forgotten my name in the past few hours after that. By the by, I've got something to tell you. This here Banshee Ito is of a much nobler character than regular folk. That's why I lead a detached life, away from the world's vulgarities. What are you trying to say? I can be crazy desperate, but... I never shame my dear departed mom or divine providence. You understand? No, you lost me. I'm saying I never resort to stealing, even dying of hunger. Here, these are yours. <laughs> he pulls out a wristwatch and a wallet. Each looks like an antique. They're inlaid with subtle designs. You forgot them at the restaurant. Let me see them. I grab them both and rush to open the wallet. But there's no ID inside. There was no driver's license or company card with an ID in it when you got it. Don't ask me. You said you forgot your old wallet somewhere and lost it. It was probably in there. Oh. And look at what else is in the wallet. Bills, coins, and a number of familiar business cards. Saya Kujo Spirit Healer. Those things. You tried to give me one. Told me to go there if I remembered anything. But I gave it back. I don't make a habit of carrying useless stuff. Saya Kujo's card was in my pocket when I first arrived at Kujo Mansion. It must have been the one Banshee, retu Banshee returned. There's no doubt about it. I lost all my memories after I met Banshee. I've asked everything I want to know. But something's still bugging me. Did I say anything about the mark when you saw me ten days ago? Well... I was so focused on eating that I wasn't paying full attention. Are you kidding? Oh yeah, you said the same thing as Hero about the cannon soldier. There's no way a human hand on a statue will make it move. But it did actually move. That's what I thought too. And then... You said something strange. You said what happened 50 years... ago wasn't because of the project. It was all because of her. Her. That's not all. You said she gave you the mark. That she loved watching you lose your memories and fear death. You made her kick the bucket once. But she came back to life. You said you needed to do the same thing done 50 years ago to get rid of her. My heart wants to beat out of my chest. I can feel sweat run down my face. There's no way I can keep calm. Before I lost my memories, I'd known who had cursed me with the mark. Hey, old man! Who's she? Did I tell you? I wanted to know too, so I asked. But you couldn't answer me. I don't think you were trying to hide it. You just honestly didn't remember. Was that because of the mark? Well, that's about all I can tell you. Light, we should get going soon. Go? Where? I'll tell you in your car. I'm real tired of standing. I'd like to sit for a bit. There's no point in arguing here. I'll just get it out of it once we're in the car. My past self. So there's still one spirit unaccounted for. There are traces of the name of the store up on the roof. Looks like it's closed now. Let's see what's left of her. Nope, mansion's out of the way. Banshee climbs into the back seat of the car. His heavy scent fills the enclosed space. I can finally catch my breath. Now then, driver, take us to the forest by H. Castle. I drive down the familiar road. All lights along the way are strangely green. We reach our destination without me having to slow down the car once. The engine chugs along. I feel the wheels of fate turning like those on the car I'm riding in. Ten days ago I promised, in exchange for you buying me an extra order of almond jelly, if you did forget everything, I'd take you to H Shrine. Sounds like I prepared for everything. 
But if I was that careful, why didn't I leave myself a clue? Why prepare if I was just going to forget? Did the curse progress faster than expected so there wasn't time? Or did someone get rid of it? But if I had business at each shrine, why didn't I go there while I still had my memories? Something about timing. Waiting for some magic summer clearing, cleaning to clear away impurity. Suddenly, my old self echoes in my head. I speak the words out loud slowly as realization dawns. The Summer Purification Rites. Their rites held at shrines to exorcise evil. On the last day of June, you pass through woven reeds to cleanse yourself. I was trying to use that ritual to exorcise the impurity. Gotcha! Luckily, today is the 1st of July, so the rites or whatever are done. Should be no problem now. Exorcise the impurity, huh? What kind of impurity was I trying to cleanse? The more I learn, the less I understand. My previous self is like a complete stranger to me. How many times have I come to this forest now? The creepy arch and the thick trees look the same as always. You know where H Shrine is, yeah? Lead the way. You've never been there? First I heard of it was ten days ago. Banshee and I push through the vegetation and make our way down the beast trail. We pass under the stone Tory gate. And finally arrive at the desolate H Shrine. The few headless Buddha statues that are left shine in the light of the flashlight. So, the statues used in the project were stolen from here? Yeah, that's right. Is it really true the statues are connected to the mark somehow? I've considered the possibility that the mark was caused by the Divine Wrath. But ten days ago... You said what happened fifty years ago wasn't because of the project. It was all because of her. This course I've been following this whole time. Then at some point, I had to have been fed some huge lie. But what could it be? A shudder runs through me at the thought. It feels like I'm looking into the depths of hell. You said ten days ago that... That altar holds something important. Something about needing to keep it here to exercise the impurity. He approaches the small altar. That's the wrong altar. <laughs> and puts his hand on the sliding door. Huh? What's going on here? Thing's empty. Don't ask me. It was already gone when I was here earlier. Well, that's darn weird. You said there was a cloth pouch. What was inside? A small fist-sized statue. A Nenji Butsu or something. It was the Goshin tie for the shrine. The Kujo head used it in the shelter to stop the mess 50 years ago. And again, it's the Kujo family. They must have strong ties to the mark. Well, this is about all I can do for you. At least it was enough to pay off for the dessert. You should head back, son. Right. I'm still unsure about what my old self was thinking, but... It's clear whatever plan I had didn't work. Where did the Nenji Butsu go? On the way back, I feel reluctant to go. I keep turning to look toward the shrine. Each time I do, Banshee hurries me onto the forest entrance. Well, this is where we part ways. You're not going to ride back with me? I'm going to be honest with you. Got a bit carsick on the way here. Flat roads are fine, but the curves and hills did me in. Just got a nice meal and I'd hate to throw it up, so I'll walk back. But it's pretty far from here. Kids are such wimps these days. When I was young, I used to walk across the Himalayas all the time. This ain't nothing. His laugh is loud enough for the whole forest to hear. He waves and leaves me alone. Once he's out of sight, I get into the car. I 
pull out of the deserted parking lot and drive back to the mansion. As I count the streetlights passing by, I go over everything Banshee told me. So I don't know the motive just yet on why she did that, but she's been sitting there the whole damn time. Fifty years ago in the shelter, the Kanon soldier went berserk, but it wasn't because of the army's experiments, it was her. The army was unable to stand up to the threat of her and the soldier, but the Kujo family had used the Nenji Butsu to settle everything. However, she still exists in this time period. She was the one who gave me my mark. Before I lost my memories, I was planning on using the Nenji Butsu like they did before. I left it at each shrine so it could be cleansed of its impurity, but somewhere along the line it went missing. The past me probably couldn't have predicted that would happen. I'm almost back at Kujo Mansion. As my drive comes to an end, I focus on what the most important detail is. That's right, who she is. I have a hunch about her identity, but I can't be sure yet. And that definitely proves that she was there. Fifty years ago, she made the Kanon soldier move down to the shelter. The Kujo family's head sealed her. They would have brought her to the mansion. The sacred objects for the project of which she was one were returned to the Kujos. I gripped the steering wheel tighter. If there were any way to defeat her, it just has to be in the mansion. I don't have any solid proof, but the fragments of my memories are whispering to me. The entrance doesn't look any different. My mark burns. The sharp pain nearly brings me to my knees. It seems she has no intention of hiding her presence any longer. It was a, only a western-style cushion. That's depressing. Is this the heart of the grudge? The source of the spirit? No way. Something was here. Something cursed. Something that might be able to stop the canon soldier. As if to mock me even further, this mark warns me time is short. We'll just have to face the soldier with what we've, gained, what we've gathered up until now. Forgive what we're missing and take stock of what we have. One use the saber of short sword, we'll have to throw them. If the spirit is nebulous like that spirit door, then the Kagura Suzu Bell will be helpful in the blanks. We'll mess up our ears if we shoot them, but one document mentioned must destroy a head. I'm not sure about this at all, but I can't give up if I want to live. After we defeat the soldier, Banshee's mark disappears and he remembers meeting me several times before I lost my memory. I've been investigating the sacred treasures the Kujo family donated to the Heavenly Buddha Project. When I met him ten days ago, the mark was already on my arm. I told him she gave it to me, but I had already forgotten her name by then. The last time I saw Banshee, I told him that if I completely forgot everything, he should take me to H Shrine. He says I wanted to recover some Nenji Butsu that was there or something. But when we arrived, the Nenji Butsu was oddly missing. All the effort I went through to protect the mark from causing havoc was wasted. But I feel like I'm getting closer to the truth I've been pursuing. I've defeated five spirits now since I first came to Kujo Mansion, but none were the one that gave me my mark. So where exactly is this she that I need to face? My old self knew and prepared something that would help me with no memory. Then there must be a way to stop her. Don't be afraid. I've got to trust in myself. Mary! Come out and play! So we meet again. Mary's voice is soft. I know now. Behind those words is hidden an intense lust for blood. You came back to life rather quickly. You gave me nearly a whole day. More than enough time. I admit that rabbit's attack surprised me. 
but unexpected events can themselves be rather enjoyable. When I had brought Mary to Aid Shrine, we caught sight of the rabbit there. It might have suspected Mary's true nature. That rabbit. Its great love for you pushed it into recklessness. What was that rabbit, really? Determine that for yourself. Who are you? Know that, and the answer will come. Though it is impossible so long as you bear the mark I gave you. Mary gave me the mark. I had a hunch, but hearing it from her lips fills me with dread. Just what are you trying to accomplish? Dragging the living to the depths of despair before killing them. I believe I explained that it is the spirit's utmost desire and joy. And I had your cooperation with achieving that. Cooperate? That's ridiculous. Oh? Have you not realized yet? You did bring those pathetic mark bearers directly to the spirits, did you not? They feared the spirits' existence, trembled in the face of death. I savored the taste of that fear and despair. Most delicious. You had all of us help out. Just to terrify the mark bearers even more. Clearly. I could have waited for the curses to complete if only I wanted them dead. That is not the only lie. Mark bearers must stay in small groups. Do not contact outsiders. All my instructions were to drive you into a state of emergency. And not once did you doubt me. I bet she's telling me all of this. Because she wants me terrified with how hopeless the situation I find myself in is. I'm frozen in place and I know my face must be as pale as death. She must be loving this. Don't tell me you created all those spirits. Just to accomplish that? Indeed. When Lady Christie believed Divine Wrath was the cause of the mark, I had never been more amused. Her foolishness was so delightful. I just had to come along with you. So you lied. Of course. How could a pile of broken statues possibly do anything? I could be imagining it, but... I feel like she hesitated for a moment there. Fifty years ago, I was sealed away by the head of the Cujo family. I awoke here five years ago. At the time, I was still unable to speak and communicate. But it seems my awakening alone caused a number of ripples. Those who died unfortunate deaths on Cursed Land became monstrous spirits. The H. Elementary abuse, the Honeybee Mass Suicide, Seiko's Assaulted Suicide, they all happened five years ago. I finally regained my full power a little over a month ago. Then the Buddha statue connected to me fifty years ago began moving. The woman killed by the statue was also influenced by my power. That must be the Kanon soldier in Zukawa. Zukawa believed it was the divine oracle from the soldier, when it had really been Mary. She did as the great Osiris said and transformed herself into Miss Zu. Once my strength returned, I again bestowed my power on spirits. It connects humans to me and manipulates them into a panic. The mark... I know you've been toying with us. But, well, was there really a need to make us connect, be connected to you in some way? Of course. By being in direct contact with you, I could taste your fear. Even now. Are you scared of me, Lord Light? Not really, no. I saw this coming. Very admirable. Her porcelain face cracks. Ever since you declared that you would fight the mark, I have waited eagerly for this day. Over the past ten days, I have tasted your fear through the mark. Thick and syrupy, as sweet as honey. Each savored morsel made me want to smash you to pieces. But I waited. I am not so foolish as to kill a goose that lays golden eggs. Ah, uh, but I cannot take it any more. Like crushing a ripe fruit and sipping its juices. I want to break you down and savor your sweet fear. Has died a deep crimson. A few minutes left until death closes in. My thoughts blur together suddenly. What happens to a mark bear right before dawn? 
I've seen it many times. Is that what's happening to me now? Lord Light, wait for me. I'll kill, kill. I can hear Mary stand up over by the sofa. At this rate, the rabbit's fate will be mine, too. I have to run away. Check within the red, in my room. Something whispers in my ear. That's right. That voice. But what does my room mean? Focus, who does that voice belong to? Yasuoka, she said. It was someone who loved me. Mary's coming closer. Where should I run? I assume MK is Masamune. I sprint at full speed up the stairs and fly into Saya's room. Much like the entrance hall, it's dark. The voice said, check within the red in my room. Is something there? But where should I look? The red's the pool of blood. Sayakujo's bloodstain is still on the floor. It's obviously dry by this point in time. There might be something lying on top of it. I can't be sure as it's too dark. Nothing was there the last time I was here. Picking it up, I discover that it's a small pouch. Inside is a hard, thin object. I move over to the moonlight to see it better. It's a small Buddha statue. It can't be. Is this the Nenji Butsu? It seems to be stained with blood, and I get an ominous feeling from it. The impurity. It hasn't been exercised yet. I instinctively know the instant I see it. My mind is suddenly flooded with all my memories of the Nenji Butsu, one after another. Fifty years ago, the head of the Kujo family used this to steal Mary's power. He put the Nenji Butsu inside her to seal her. Then about a month ago, someone took it out. That person... was me. Because of that, Mary regained her powers. The Nenji Butsu in my hand looks exactly as it did back then, full of impurity. Impurity that's built up from sealing Mary's power for 50 years. To cleanse it, I left the Nenji Butsu at the uncontaminated Age Shrine. It would take time to exercise all of the impurity. It's already July. The summer purification rite is over. So why is it still impure? The object the rabbit had in its mouth. It could have been carrying the pouch then instead of the master key. Then the Nenji Butsu was taken away from each shrine before the beginning of July. Maybe the rabbit saw Mary by the shrine and was scared that she would find it. So it had no choice but to steal it away. The door to the adjacent room opens. Mary must be looking for me. But she can sense the presence of mark bearers. What's going on? Wait. Is it possible that Saya's blood is protecting me? Bring it to where I met my end. The voice whispers in my ear again. If this isn't where the voice's owner died, they must have... Eh, they must have met their end elsewhere. There's only one other place. While Mary is in the room next door, I sprint down to the entrance hall. I make a beeline to Mary's sofa and spot where the rabbit died. The voice that spoke to me and helped me every time a spirit was closing in. If Sai was working through anything, it must have been that rabbit. Sensing something, I look down at my hand. The Nenji Putsu's impurity is gone. Is this what you've been telling me, Saya? I speak to the Depart Woman who's guided me as I struggled without memories. Put the Nenji Butsu, the source of the doll's curse, press it to the black mark. Then, the 
pause for stop. The floorboards creak ominously. I raise my head to the staircase, rising into the darkness before me. A dark figure stands on the landing. I found you! The mark scorches me. My head goes blank. Mary is coming closer. My body won't listen to me. Lord Light! Mary closes her hands around my neck. She, she's tr trying to kill me. I squeeze the Denji boot suit and the fog that's impeding my thoughts lifts. It's still a struggle to think. I should be able to move my arm now. Put the Denji boot suit on the source of the curse. I only have one chance. Where should I stick the Denji boot suit? So if you remember the pictures, it's on her right arm. to drag my impossibly heavy arm and stick the Neji Butsu on Mary's right arm. She's hiding it. But I'm sure that's where the black mark was. of those she killed. shatters into dust. Did I really do it? I hesitantly look down at my right arm. The mark is gone. I did it. I finally did it. I have to say it out loud to convince myself. A victory at the expense of Saya's life. I can't claim it's completely over, but there's no harm being relieved for now. The fog cloud in my head clears away. My memories slowly return to me. I look around the dimly lit hall again. I know this mansion well. Because I'm... The clock on the second floor begins chiming wildly like it did ten days ago. When I make my way to it, it stops. Almost as if it has a will of its own. That's right, this grandfather clock. I think a skilled ancestor of the Cujo family crafted it. That one chisel may have been used to make it. That's right, inside this clock. I open the door and stick my hand inside. My fingers brush something hard. Taking it out, I realize it's a voice recorder. I press the play button. It's a man's voice. A voice I know all too well. It's my voice. I decided to leave this recording behind in case something should happen. That doll may dispose of any files or documents. I'm banking on her overlooking a piece of technology. As I listen, I start to remember recording this. I'd done it right before I received the mark from Mary. Now, where should I begin?
It started five years ago, two years after I became Kujo family head. My sister Sai and I found the doll in a wood box while sorting the warehouse. The moment I broke the seal and saw her, I could sense something sinister. But it took a while longer to fully understand what she truly is. If only there had been records. A great-grandfather who sealed her didn't leave any before his early death. Because of that, his descendants weren't told about the doll. I managed to learn the doll had been loaned to an army lab during the war. A strange old man who lived in an underground shelter told me. Then I went overseas to try to get more information on the doll. But I got into an accident while away and was presumed missing. So Saya became the new family head. I wasn't able to contact her until after she had inherited the title. It wasn't something worth contesting. So I explained everything and had her keep up the facade that I was missing. Public records still stated Masamune Kujo was very much alive, of course. I couldn't have used my passport or license otherwise. I'm off topic, sorry. I only just returned to the country last week. Other psychics abroad all agreed it would be bad to leave the doll be. A Nenji Butsu inside the doll still suppressed its cursed power, but I realized that it was almost at its limit. If I left it alone, it would crumble. Then it'd be impossible to suppress the cursed power of the doll. That was the worst case scenario. But what was to be done? The answer I came up with was to remove the Nenji Butsu from the doll temporarily. Its impurity would be cleansed after a month stored in a pure area, and then I'll place it back into the doll. If I succeed, the doll's power will be sealed for a few more decades. But the problem is that one month. I have no idea what kind of curse will be released when the doll's unsealed. I'll do what I can to prevent disasters, but my power can't compare to the Neji Butsu. I can't guarantee anything. There may be victims again, like the tragedy 50 years ago. But, this is a necessary evil. It must be done in order to prevent even more people from falling victim. After this, I'll disassemble the doll and remove the Neji Butsu. I pray everything goes according to plan and the worst of evils is avoided. I hope this record isn't needed. But, if the one listening to this has a loved one who's fallen victim to the curse, then I'm very sorry. The recording ends there. Damn it. I clench my fists so hard my nails dig into my palms. Yes, the voice of the tape was mine, but I'm furious with it. I don't know that person at all. The mark has claimed so many victims over the past month. I even lost my little sister, Saya. Was she just another inevitable victim that the voice spoke of? I... I can't forgive him. Ever since I lost my memories, I've lived as Hero Light. My blood boils at what Masamune Kujo did. Occasional cool breeze signals the summer is almost over. I spent my time putting the case of the mark to rest as best as I can. I put Sai to rest by burying the rabbit and contacted the surviving mark bearers. Putting the Buddha statues in places of honor was also one of those tasks. They weren't connected to the mark after all, but I couldn't just leave them there. Plus, there was no way Christy to keep quiet about the statues. So, with her guidance, Sinyasuoka, Daimon, and Banshee's help, I carried the broken statues out of the shelter and returned them to Eight Shrine. By now, my memory has completely returned, but I can still can't think of myself as Masamune Kujo. My memories of my past feel more like I'm reading someone else's map biography. Legally, I am Masamune. I inherited Kujo Mansion. I'm not sure how to feel about it, but... I think I'll consider it a way to pay Saya back for saving me. About Masamune Kujo. He became head of the Kujos seven years ago. 
Scholarly, inclined, and introverted, he wasn't the type to be very social. He left all public appearances to Saya Kujo, so not many people knew what he looked like. The only photos of him were from small local newspapers. Masamune accidentally uncovered Mary in the family's warehouse five years ago. That discovery changed his life. I traveled extensively abroad in order to learn more about Mary. In one country, I got into an accident and fell into a coma for half a year. Even worse, that country proceeded to treat me as an unidentified traveler. I don't know if that was merely my terrible luck or if Mary's curse had something to do with it. When I was finally able to contact home, so I had already become the new head. The rest was as the tape said. I had no idea that Mary's power was far greater than I had imagined. All of my efforts to suppress her power were completely useless. My memories unraveled faster than I thought. How did Mary come to be in the first place? One theory says a doll maker in the 19th century used magic to create her. Another says the spirit of a young girl who died prematurely took up residence in a doll. In the end, it's still a mystery. No one knows what happened to create a doll like her. We only know that each of my Mary's owners died tragic deaths. Shortly after the turn of the 20th century, she came to be owned by the head of the Kujos. He either didn't know the curse or simply didn't believe it. Disasters began befalling the family. Mary gained enough power to become sentient and produce spirits. Then the tragedy in the shelter happened. The seething grudges of the experiment's victims and the Buddha statues. They may have triggered her awakening. Whatever Mary's true identity is, the fact remains she altered many people's fates. Mine and the Mark Bearers included. Speaking of... An update on the surviving mark bearers. Moe Watanabe became a part-time writer for her favorite magazine, Uparts Monthly. She sometimes comes to Kujo Mansion to interview me about spirits and ghosts. Tsukasa Yoshida is studying every day for the middle school exams next year. He bragged in his letter to me about what he did in the national, how he did, how well he did in the national mock exams. Satoru Mashida brought me a drink, bought me a drink like he promised. Seems he's thinking about becoming a private detective. He actually asked me if I wanted to join him. Was he serious? I didn't know for sure. Sho Nakashima is picking fights, riding his bike and doing whatever he wants, as usual. But recently, out of the blue, I heard he's joined his neighborhood's baseball team. Christy Arimura has started writing an essay exposing all of her past affairs. She's trying to get back into the industry. Suzu Morimiya was able to see her father. Lately, she started asking me for advice about how to get her parents to reconcile. I have no idea if I helped at all, but she says they sometimes have meals together now. Eita Nakamatsu has gone back to surfing the BBS every day as usual. But what's news, he's been stopping by the city employment center. I guess he wants to get a city job and be a role model for Suzu. Best of luck to him. A day doesn't go by that I don't see Ai Kashiwagi on TV as part of Love and Hero. She sent a ticket like she promised, but... I need to drill up some courage to go to a concert for teens. Alone. At my age. Tawaku Yasuoka is still working as a fortune teller in Ginza. Apparently, she believes I have spiritual powers or something. She keeps sending customers with spirit problems to the mansion. I wish she'd stop. Madoka Hiro spends her days working as a researcher while also visiting the shelter. Her and Bachi squabble a lot, but I wish she'd stop complaining to me about it. Shuji Daimon seems to be doing better now like a weight's been lifted off his chest. He's in the process of convincing officials to publicize the shelter and build a memorial for it. Banshee Ito has returned to his beloved underground shelter. He stops by the mansion sometimes, filling the place with his scent. Of course, he comes to beg me for food. Now then... 
I finished my break and returned to the workbench in the corner of the room. Over the past two months, Mary has managed to repair herself. Her power hasn't completely come back yet, but she's extremely frightening. The Nenjibutsu alone won't be enough to continue sealing her powers in the years to come. I must prepare extra spiritual measures. It's taken a long time to get those ready, but today I finally finished. Once everything is complete, I replace the Nenjibutsu inside Mary. Finally, it's over. I pick Mary up and put her in a wood box. Five years. This all started when I opened the lid of this box. Mary stares up at me from the depths of the box. I have no idea if she's aware of what's happening right now. But there's no doubt she'll regain her powers when the Nenjibutsu wears out decades from now. I'm determined to find a way to destroy this cursed doll before that happens. Until that day... You need to stay asleep, Mary. And that's the good end, folks. If you lost any of your party members, they'd come back as a ghost right there to kill you. So I have a few questions about the game overall, primarily with the proofreading stuff, because there were quite a few errors. So Andy, Kayang, you got some explaining to do, man. The guy probably only had like a day to do it, so I can't really fault him or anything. Like for the special thanks, they have two S's in thanks, and I think they're missing the first letter on that one guy's name, or it's not capitalized, so damn. Overall, I think this was a rush job trying to get it out for Halloween. If you didn't know, this is actually the first game of a series. There's only two of the games out now. I don't know if the second one's on Switch. If it is, I'll be picking it up when it finally comes out. Otherwise, I don't know what platform we have to get it for. But overall, it wasn't that bad. I don't know if I can really justify the price for it, because when you think about it, we had three different areas to explore. Two of the ghosts were in familiar areas. Well, two two pairs shared areas, I should say it that way. There was no real voice acting in the game either. There weren't a lot of CGs, which is why. On that account, I do have to say it's not really worth the price, but the downside is if people don't buy it, then there won't be the sequel, and... Yeah, it it's a mess, man. I wonder if it was priced that way because they were expecting low sales or something, so only the dedicated fans would pick it up. So, what do you guys think? You didn't think it was over, did you?